Three points. Three. Division of polynomials. Do you remember how to divide numbers? Do you? How do you divide? How many times does three go into 472? Three goes into four once. That is correct. And then what? One times three is three. That is correct. And then what? Subtract. Four minus three is one. Bring down the seven. Three goes in 17. Are you sure? Yeah, five times. Then five times three is 15. And then we repeat. Subtract two. Bring down the two. Three goes in 22 seven times. You guys agree? Seven times three is 21. And we subtract one. And now we stop. Okay. We stop and we say, what is the answer to this? What is 472 divided by three? The answer is 157 plus remainder one over divisor three. Do we remember this? Okay, this is a reminder how we can do long division with numbers. Now we'll repeat the same process, the exact same process with polynomials and variables. We want to write our answer in this form. Maybe I should label these. This is the divisor. The three is the divisor. What are you dividing by? That's the divisor. The thing to be divided up the pizza, we call that the dividend. The thing on the top is the quotient. The leftover on the bottom is the remainder. And so we write the answer as the quotient plus the remainder over the divisor. Let's try it with a polynomial. There's two things we must note. The polynomials must be written in descending order. What does that mean? Highest multiplicity or degree term first. And second, right, all exponent terms, even missing terms. Okay, so in descending order, this would be 12x squared minus five that's step one right step two would be i need an x squared and an x term so it should be 12x squared plus zero x minus five does this make sense that missing thing the coefficient zero now we set up the long division inside what is my dividend what's the pizza that i'm splitting up yes but we write it in descending order with the missing term, or this will mess us up. And then what is my divisor? Okay. So we look at the first number and we said, how many times does 2x go into 12x squared? So the first thing you should divide 12x squared by 2x. What's the answer? Yeah, 12 over 2 is in fact 6 x squared over x is x and we write that over the x term 6x now to find what we're going to subtract you need to then multiply the 6x by what the divisor yes 2x minus 1 and we're going to write this result here is the thing that we're going to subtract so if I distribute that, I would get 12x squared. You know you did this right if those are exactly the same first terms, because when we subtract, they go away. Minus 6x. Any questions so far? What was the next step? Subtract. OK. We subtract. And the tricky thing here is it's not a single term. You have to subtract the entire thing and distribute the minus sign. So what's 12x squared minus 12x squared? Zero, that canceled, that's what we wanted. By design, it canceled. 
what's zero minus negative six X? Positive six X. So this is the most common mistake here. People write negative. We're subtracting negative six X. How to avoid this? Make it addition and distribute the negative sign. So then it's zero plus six. Next step, we repeat the process, bring down the negative five and repeat. I look at the first terms. How many times does two X go into six X? Three times and we write it and it's a positive three. So we write plus three. Then what? Multiply three by two X minus one. And we write it here. That would be six X. We want it to match exactly minus three and you subtract. What do we get? Two, negative two, two, negative two. So if we distribute the minus sign, we get negative six X and a positive three. So the X's cancel and negative five plus three is in fact negative two. So we can say, what is the answer to negative five plus 12 X squared over two X minus one? The answer is the quotient. Six X plus three is the quotient plus the remainder is negative two over the divisor. What's the divisor? Two X minus one. This is the answer that we're looking for. Any questions about this? What do you think? Not too bad? A little tedious? Law of computations, easy to, to make a sign error. So practice that. Try to get those questions right on the first, first try. Do you want to practice another? Or are we okay? Let's practice one more. <laughs> okay, three X cubed plus X squared minus five X plus two. And we're dividing by X squared minus two X plus two. How many times does X squared go into three X cubed? What does that simplify to make? Two of the X's cancel and I get three X. I write it over the X term. Then we ask what is three X times that divisor X squared minus two X plus two? Three X cubed minus six X squared plus six X. So we write this underneath the first three terms in the dividend. Then we subtract this. You want to distribute the negative sign. Just flip the sign of everything and add. So if we did this right, the X cubed terms should cancel and we get what X squared? Seven X squared and what X? Negative 11 X, we bring down the plus two and we repeat the process. How many times does X squared go into seven X squared? Very good. Seven times and we write, yes, please remember the plus, plus seven. What is seven times X squared minus two X? plus two, plus 14. We subtract that result. So distribute the minus sign, three X minus 12. How do you know when you're done? Yeah, so three X, X squared can't go into it anymore, right? We don't get a polynomial term. We're done, doesn't go in evenly. What is the answer? The quotient is what? 3x plus 7 is correct. We add, what's the remainder? 3x minus 12. Good. Over the divisor, x squared minus 2x plus 2. For future reference, the top one is called an improper fraction because the degree of the numerator is what? The numerator. 
Oh, okay. Degree three, right? Degree of denominator is two. Degree of numerator is larger. You can do long division to make it a polynomial when you want to plot a proper fraction. Proper because the degree of the top is smaller, degree one over degree two. Okay, have fun with the long division over the weekend. Let's do some synthetic division. This is a shortcut that doesn't always work. Synthetic division only works if you're dividing by x plus a number or x minus a number. So for instance, we could not have done synthetic division, for example, two. Our only option is long division because we were dividing by x squared, not x plus a number, x minus a number. Same thing here. It's not x plus a number, x minus a number, so synthetic division doesn't work here. Let's try synthetic division. Once again, we need to write the top in a descending order with consecutive terms. So I'm missing the x squared term, so I need to write 0x squared. Are we all, all okay with that? And we're just going to memorize this process, which is a shortcut to ignore the variables. So I take all the coefficients and their signs. 2, 0, negative 8, 7. And I'm going to write this vertical line and horizontal line. Now, what I'm dividing by, x plus 3, I'm going to write in the form of x minus something. What is that something I am subtracting by? Negative 3. This is the c value. And this is what we're going to write here the number that we're going to apply synthetic division by. The shortcut is that the opposite of the x plus 3, we take minus 3. The first thing you're going to do is bring down the first number, bring down the 2, and then we're going to multiply. What's negative 3 times 2? And we'll write that answer below the 0. Now, typically, you just continue writing it on the same grid, but I'm going to redraw my grid just so we can see the order of operations here. Okay, I'm going to copy down the 2 and the negative 6, and now the next thing is I want to add these numbers and write the result below. 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6, and then we repeat this process where we multiply negative 3 times negative 6, and the answer is positive 18 we write it below the next number, maybe. And we're just going to keep doing this until the end of the world. Negative 3, 2, 0, negative 8, 7. I re I'm just copying down all the numbers I already wrote. And we do what next? Add. Write that number below and then repeat. We multiply. What's negative 3 times 10? Negative 30. I'm not going to write the grid again. <laughs> Let's add one more time. Add to get negative 23. So when you do this, I'm perfectly fine with you doing it all on just one grid, not rewriting it. Bring it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. So you get to the end of the world. What does this mean? This is the remainder. The remainder, this is the constant. This is the x term, and this is the x squared term. You just keep adding an x. What does this mean? The result of my division, should I write it? 2x cubed, yes, that's right. I'm just rewriting my whole polynomial again. Yes, this answer is, in fact, 2x squared minus 6x plus 10. Then I have remainder negative 23 over the divisor x plus 3. Do you like synthetic division? Yes. If it was x minus 3? Yes. You flip the sign because of what you're subtracting. Yes. I, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, so zero over anything is what? How many times does 10 go into zero? Zero times. Yes, so it's zero. We don't have to write it. Great question. That's our goal. We'd like to find the number that makes it zero. Personally, I don't like synthetic division because my memory is very poor. And if I forget like how to do a step, then I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so there's no way to, to double check it. Just have to memorize the process. Okay. Emma, what's the C? Yes, very good. So it's what we're subtracting, it's the opposite sign. C is equal to three. What are the numbers that I'm gonna use? So my lead number is what? One. My next number is what? My next number is what? Very good, zero, okay. I was trying to trick you, I didn't. It is in fact zero because we have a zero x squared in the middle. If you forget that, your answer is gonna be very wrong. Yes. We write the three here. Are you okay with me doing this all on one grid? Bring down the one. What's three times one? What's two plus three? And three times five? 15 plus zero? 15 times three? 45 plus negative 56. Yeah, you have calculators. Don't stress. Three times negative 11, negative 33 plus seven. And just note, that's the remainder. So I'd write my answer, negative 26 over what? Yes, the divisor, x minus three. Then this would be the constant. This would be plus 15x. This would be plus 5x squared. This is 1x cubed. Okay, so if the question was asking to divide by 2x minus 3, we can't do this. It has to be x with coefficient 1 to do synthetic division. If it's asking x squared minus 3, we'd have to do long division. We're already out of time. Let's at least talk about the remainder theorem. Theorem, anytime you see a theorem, means please memorize it. Polynomial P of X divided by X minus C has a remainder P of C. This is a shortcut to find a remainder. So if you do long division, this is a form of our division formula. This is a quotient times divisor plus remainder is equal to the original top dividend. So hopefully this looks very familiar. This is a formula, but when we plug in the C value, C minus C is zero. And when you multiply by zero, you get zero. So the answer is when you plug in C, you'll get your remainder every time. All I care about is that you remember that fact and use it when it's useful. So for example three, let's just verify that it works. What's my polynomial? X to the fourth plus two X cubed minus 56 X plus seven. What's my C value? Three. So the remainder theorem says that if I plug three in for X, what should my answer be? Close, negative 26, right? That was the remainder. Shall we try? What's three to the fourth power? Yes, 81. Are we, oh, we are out of time. Okay, verify that you get negative 26 so that you can trust the theorem. Plug it into your calculator. And we'll pick up here next time, applying the remainder theorem to a few examples. Are we all comfortable with long division and synthetic division? Okay. What's the remainder theorem state? If I divide by something in the form x minus c, if I plug c into my function, 
My answer will be the remainder. So let's apply this to example four. Given P of X equal to X cubed plus three X squared minus four X minus 12. And function D is X plus two. How can we use the remainder theorem to check is P divisible by D? Okay, what's my C value here if I divide these? C is equal to negative two. It's the opposite sign, right? C is equal to negative two. What is my value? If I plug negative two into my function, this is what the remainder theorem says. Whatever my answer is when I plug in negative two is the remainder as if I had done synthetic division. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We say, what is negative two cubed plus three times negative two squared minus four times negative two minus 12? Just plug in your calculator. Negative two cubed is what? That's right, negative eight. Negative two squared, four times three, positive 12. Negative four times negative two, positive eight, minus 12. What's my answer? Negative eight plus eight is zero. 12 minus 12 is zero. My answer is zero. What we conclude by the remainder theorem is that P divided by D is equal to, not what's equal to, has remainder zero. Any questions about that? Let's verify this by doing synthetic division and see if we actually get that. If we divide synthetically, what goes here? What numbers are right up here at the top line? One, three, negative four, negative 12. Do you guys agree with that? Okay, and I put what number here? Yep, negative two. Okay, we bring down the one. And what do we do next? Multiply by negative two. And I get one times negative two is negative two. What happens next? Yes, three plus negative two is one. One times negative two is negative two. Negative four plus negative two. Negative six. Negative six times negative two. No, that's wrong. Sorry. 12. And we add it and we get remainder zero. So do we understand the connection between part A and part B? I have two different ways to find the remainder of zero. You could plug the C value into your polynomial using the remainder theorem, or you can use synthetic division. Can you use this result from synthetic division to factor the polynomial? What factor does this correspond to? X minus negative two. And what's left over? How to write those coefficients as a polynomial? This is my x squared term, my x term, and my constant term. So I would have 1x squared plus 1x minus 6. Do we see the usefulness of synthetic division? It helps us factor polynomial so that we can solve an equation. Can I factor this further? x plus 2 times, where factors are negative 6 to add to make 1? x plus 3, x minus 2. We just use synthetic division to solve the equation. Negative 2, negative 3, 2. We have three solutions to the equation in part C. Any questions about this? Okay, we don't have time for all of these. Which one do you want to try? A, B, or C? Raise your hand if you want to try A. Raise your hand if you want to try B. All right, raise your hand if you want to try C. I don't know. It's like a tie. Okay, we're going to do C. <laughs> okay, what's the remainder theorem say? If I plug the C value in, I'll get the remainder as if I had done synthetic division. So let's plug that in. Are we comfortable with this? No? You don't like plugging complex numbers into polynomials? Okay, we'll get comfortable with it. 1 plus 2i in parentheses cubed plus 1 plus 2i. How do we evaluate 1 plus 2i cubed? 
one plus two i times one plus two i. It's a bino binomial, two terms. So we're going to have to FOIL it. What's one times one? Very good. <laughs> What's one times two i? Two i. What is two i times one? Two i. And finally, What's 2i times 2i? 2i squared? No. Yeah, 2i times 2i would be 4i squared, right? Any questions so far? What's i squared? Negative 1. So this is really negative 4. So what's 1 plus negative 4? Negative 3. What's 2i plus 2i? 4i, but I still have this pesky 1 plus 2i left over. So we have to FOIL again. Okay, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times 2i, negative 6i. 4i times 1 plus 4i. What's 4i times 2i? 8i squared. Very good. What is 8 times i squared? Negative 8. No more i, because i squared equals negative 1. Maybe let's write that off the side. i squared is negative 1. So it's just negative 8. Negative 3 plus negative 8. Negative 11. Negative 6i plus 4i. Negative 2i. So all I did was cube that first number. That was a lot of work. But now I still have the plus 1 plus 2i plus 10. So we say, what's negative 11 plus 1 plus 10? 0. What is negative 2i plus 2i? The answer is 0. Whoa, that's crazy. Am I the only one whose mind is blown right now? Wow. I plugged one plus two i into my polynomial and I got zero. That's a zero. Our zeros don't have to be integers. They could be complex numbers. Should we check dividing synthetically? Let's try. What are my coefficients? Okay, thank you for remembering the zero x squared here. And then what do I write off to the side? 1 plus 2i. Maybe I need to leave a little more room here. 0, 1, 10. Okay, bring down the 1. What's 1 times 1 plus 2i? 1 plus 2i. Then we add it with 0. Oh, man. What do we get when we multiply these together? No, we've done this before. <laughs> what did we get? Oh, man. Are you making me do it again? 1 plus 2i. 1 plus 2i. 1 times 1. Plus 4i. Minus 4. Okay. Minus 3. Plus 4i. That's what we got here, right? Okay, we've done that before. Now we add it with 1, and we get what? Yeah. Negative 2 plus 4i. Now when I multiply these two together, can you do that in your head? I can. It's negative 10. How do I know that? Yeah, because it's going to be 0. Okay, let's try it though. Double check. 1 plus 2i times negative 2 plus 4i. What's 1 times negative 2? Okay, 1 times 4i. 2i times negative 2? Negative 4i. And 2 times 4i. 2i times 4i. Plus 8i squared, which is... Okay, so these cancel. Oh my goodness, we got negative 10. And we add them together to make 0. We got remainder 0. Crazy, huh? If I were to factor it, it would be in the form of x minus 1 plus 2i times, okay, times 1 
x squared plus 1 plus 2i times x plus negative 2 plus 4i. Can you factor that further? Can you find those zeros? To apply the quadratic formula, right? Oh. Or we're, what we're going to learn tomorrow is another trick that will cut your work down like tremendously. It's called the conjugate pair theorem. Do you know what a conjugate is? That's if this is one plus two i, then one minus two i would also have to be zero. They always come in complex pairs. So what that means is I could divide synthetically again. And I know I'd get remainder zero again with, let's leave that till tomorrow. <laughs> Zeros of a function P of X. That's just finding the X values for which the equations equal zero. The factor theorem. If C is a zero, it's the same as saying that P of C is equal to zero by the remainder theorem. And it's the same as saying that X minus C is a factor. So we want to use synthetic division and the factor theorem to determine our x plus 1 and x minus 3 factors of the polynomial. OK, so what are my coefficients? Very good. And which one do you want to try first? OK, so what's my c value? Negative 1. Let's try synthetic division. Bring down the 1, multiply by negative 1. Add to negative 8, multiply by negative 1, add to 22, multiply by negative 1, add to negative 29, multiply by negative 1, add it. What do we think? Is x plus 1 a factor of the polynomial? This is not 0 which implies x minus one, no, sorry, x plus one is not a factor of P of X. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in all these numbers and not remember how to interpret them. The last number is not a zero, it's not a factor. Let's try it again. One, negative eight, negative 22, negative 29, and 24. Okay, which C value do I want to use? Yes, C is equal. To, I don't know. Should it be positive? Thank you. This is an 8. All right, let's do synthetic division. Bring down the 1. Multiply by 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus negative 8. Negative 5. And then 5 times 3. Negative 15 plus 22. 7 times 3, 21 plus negative 29, negative 8 times 3, and negative 24 plus 24. Yeah, doesn't that feel good? What does that mean if the remainder is 0? It implies that x plus 3 is a factor of p of x. Yes, sorry. Thank you for that. X minus three is a factor. Let's do the next example. Okay, verify that C equals negative one is a zero of the polynomial. What are the two ways we can do that? Synthetic division, another one, the remainder theorem. So either plug it into the polynomial and evaluate, or you do synthetic division. What's part B asking us to do? Write as a product, which means we would like to do synthetic division. That will help us write as a product. Okay, so let's do synthetic division. My numbers are 3, negative 2, 7, negative 2, negative 1. Bring down the 3. 3 times negative 1 is a positive 1. It's okay. I've made this mistake several times. 
It's good to check. So the difference between x plus 1, in which case c is negative 1. So we flip the sign if it's asking if x plus 1 is a factor. Was it, if it tells us c, then we use, we use that actual value. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. 5 plus 7. 12 times negative 1. That's not a factor. So we can't factor it. I think it works if this is a negative. Typo. All right, let's go again. <laughs> negative 1 times negative 5. 5 plus negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 1. Okay, life makes sense again. P of x is equal to, this corresponds to what factor? Yes, it's the opposite, of x plus 1, or x minus whatever that is, negative 1 is x plus 1. And this corresponds to what polynomial? Minus 2. Okay, and then once you have a quadratic, you can uh, factor using AC method or whatever. x plus 1 times... I'm going to do guess and check. Factors of negative two that add to make. One of them has to be negative. One has to be positive. Probably negative two here, positive one here. And double check. One times x is x. Three x times negative two is negative six x. And they add to make negative five x. Okay, so you want to really master this synthetic division and factoring polynomial. So we're going to do it the next couple days in a row. Oh, well, this is an interesting one. Use your factor theorem to build a polynomial. So something that I want you to memorize is you can always write a polynomial as its leading coefficient. Let me write that. Leading coefficient times its linear factors. Okay, so it's telling us we want a polynomial, polynomial of degree three with these zeros. If I have one half, what's my zero? Or what's my factor? X minus one half or what? I heard a two X. That's interesting. Two X what? Or two X minus one. Whoa. Yeah, these are both right. That's crazy. Okay, what about the square root of six? X minus square root six. <laughs> and yeah, X plus square root of six. F of X is equal to this. Oh wait, the leading coefficient is some number. Now this is saying write a polynomial. So there's infinitely many. I could plug in A is a thousand or A is negative two. And it's just a different polynomial that has those same zeros. So if A is two versus A is five, what's the difference? Yes, vertical stretch, very good. Multiply by A, it's gonna stretch it. If it's negative, it's going to be a reflection, yes, over the x-axis. So if it says find A polynomial, what should A be? Yes, any number. Let's just use one and we're done. On your homework, maybe you need to foil that out. Do you want to practice foiling that out or do you, are you fine? Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to move on. Oh, what about the two X minus one? You could factor out a two and it becomes X minus one half. It just changes your A value. So they're both correct for zeros. You know what? Let me ask one more hypothetical question because this is a question I almost always ask on test. Once you have the zeros, I might ask you to find the actual A value given that graph. In which case, you just need to plot one order pair that's on the graph. So I don't know. Do you want to do the purple one or the blue one? Actually, we probably can't do either. The reason I say that is because I can't find an actual order pair on this graph. What is that order pair? I have no idea. 
right? Because it's a weird fraction. But on the test, I'd probably label it. I'd probably tell you what the ordered pair is. And so let's just pretend. At, let's actually make one that's nice. Let's say my graph goes through this point here. This point is what? 0, 12. How do I find A? My Y value is 12. My X value is 0. Then you can find A. What is it? What's square root of 6 times negative square root of 6? Square root of 6 times square root of 6? Yeah, negative 6. Very good. Negative 6 times negative 1 half? Yeah. 3A is equal to 12. So then A is equal to 4. And you just plug that in. And you'll find the actual solution has to that point. Probably will be a test question. And if it's not on the test, it'll be on the final.